there, if you can get the meeting. Very good. Welcome, fellow Toastmasters and guests. This meeting of online presenters has now begun. For the benefit of our guests, please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six speeches. Or you must have sufficient relevant experience in video presentations, for example, facilitating online webinars. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure it shows your name and role. If you have one, right click and select rename to do so. We have members and oftentimes guests from many countries throughout the world. Thus, as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note that we will be recording the meeting. Your video and audio contributions may be used for club marketing purposes. Also, please mute your microphone when you are not speaking. Today's theme, as we can very well see, is ugly sweaters. Please welcome our club president, distinguished Toastmaster, Lois Margolin. Thank you, Lou. We missed, that was a great opening. I don't think I am quite as elegant as you are when you do that opening. You've got it down. Nice to see you. Nice to see some faces we haven't seen in a while. Vishon, I haven't seen you for a little bit. I think Christian's kind of starting to get logged in here. Let's go ahead and get started because we have a jam-packed meeting. I'm excited, especially because I'm the Toastmaster of the day. Yay! As the Toastmaster of the day, my responsibility is to make sure that the meeting runs smoothly, that we all keep it rolling and we end on time at nine o'clock on the dot. As with any meeting, there is not just one person. We have an entire team of elves that help us make this magical. Jacinta, would you please explain your role as the timer? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, and very much welcome guests. My role today as the timer is to keep us on time. I'll be providing a couple of changes to my virtual background. For our prepared speeches, which are five to seven minutes, you will see a green at five minutes, a yellow at six minutes, and at seven minutes, it will turn red, and it will scream and clap and shout. You go past seven minutes and 30 seconds. Back to you, Adam. Thank you. Our all counter, Christian, are you prepared? Are you okay? I know yes, you came in right after the moment. Are you good? I'm good. All right. Sorry, John. Christian, please introduce yourself and tell us about your role. Sure thing. Uh, the accounter is responsible to take note and keep track of the use of filler words and sounds. For example, uh, um, anything that can that comes across as a crutch or a filler word, and that's what I'm going to do. And I will share my report at the end of the meeting. That also includes uh, paying attention to words like "well," "you know," "you know," "you know," and looking. And wish everyone, wishing everyone a very entertaining session. Over to you, madam. Thank you, Christian. Good to see you, by the way. Our Marion, thank you for volunteering. Lou Brown. Thank you, Madam Postmaster. First of all, I don't own any ugly sweaters, unfortunately. I ended up giving away a lot of clothes for a very long reason, which, or I should say, a good story, which I'll share with you at some point in the future. But for now, I am going to highlight my ugly scarf and my ugly hat, just so I can still enjoy some of the fun here. As grammarian, I will be looking for interesting usage of language and also listening for incorrect usage of language, making note of such and providing a report at the end of the meeting. Our word of the day, also be looking for usage of word of the day, which our word of the day is kitsch. It is defined as tackiness in art or other objects that, generally speaking, appeal to popular rather than high art tastes. Such objects are sometimes appreciated in a knowingly ironic or humorous way. 
I'd be happy to hear anyone new to that in a sentence right now. If you like, since I just <laughs> logged into the website to find out what the word of the day is. In any case, back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Lou. And let's see, we have our watcher, Deborah. Hi, everyone. As your watcher tonight, I will be watching you. <laughs> I will be keeping an eye on, on <clears throat> excuse me, the framework and how contrast, non-contrast, and, and such. You're also some of the body language, just different things that um, can make it um, can make a big difference in our presentation online. So that is it in a nutshell. Thank you, Deborah. So while Deborah is watching our kitschy outfit, we have our chat manager listening to our kitschy words. Thank you, sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, I will be the chat monitor for today. Uh, Basically, I would be looking at the messages that come in the chat box, the intellectual, the spiritual, and the kitschy conversations that we have in the chat box. And I'll get back to you at the end of the meeting. And my eyes will always be on the chat box. <laughs> okay, our vote counter, Joy. After every of those three sec sections or parts we have in our meeting, you have a possibility, and I hope you will do. To, ca to vote over the chat, who was the best speaker after the first part, who was the best uh, table topic speaker, and who was the best um, evaluator. And in the end of the meeting, I will tally all these counts and uh, report who were the best ones. Thank you very much. If any of you are really wondering when these sweaters, these ugly sweaters that are going around started, it was actually the late 19th century, but it became very popular with Bill Cosby with his Huxville sweaters that he used to wear and the Christmas vacation movies, if anybody remembers those, that Clark used to wear these incredibly ugly sweaters and it caught on. I gave you a little bit of information on it when I sent out the agenda, but it's always fun to go to these amazing, ugly Christmas sweater events. I, I'm always amazed that people who have lights going on and flashing items, it's interesting what people can put together. And speaking of interesting, we have three incredibly interesting speeches tonight. Our first one is by Toastmaster Graham Carnes. This is from the competent communicator, number, speech number eight, get comfortable with visual aids. The title of the speech is using net tools to plan your travel. We have all of our evaluators. Graham is being evaluated by Elaine, Nick by Roger, Antoinette by Tiger. The introduction to Graham's speech is that Graham final CC before the traditional programs end is based on his love of travel. And today he's using visual aids to demonstrate using net tools to plan your trip. Please help me welcome Toastmaster Graham. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. Many of you may be aware that I am semi-retired. That is, I gave up working full-time some two or three years ago. I still work part-time. And the two are connected. I gave up working full time because I love to travel and my wife and I try to take a couple of significant trips each year. But of course, these have to be paid for somehow, which is why I continue to work part time to pay for them. But I have to say, in the uh, 13, 14 years since we started to travel internationally, there have been a number of changes in the way that we actually plan the trips. I should tell you that back in 2000, and six, we'd never been overseas. That was when we got our first passport and we went to Fiji. Uh, and that was wonderful and we enjoyed it immensely. And we are in fact going back to Fiji in only another six weeks or thereabouts. But the, the way that we plan things has changed quite radically. Can I ask who here travels semi-regularly? Maybe once or twice, yep. And who here uses online tools to help plan those trips? Good, glad there are a few. Let's take a look at some of the ways that you can use online tools to travel. And the first one is my, I find I've, the use of Google Docs is probably the best 
thing that's happened to me in terms of travel. You should now be able to see a copy of my 2020 Fiji and US trip on the screen. The Google Doc, you can all see that. A nod of a head would be good. Yes, good. Okay. Now, what I've done here is I have created effectively a spreadsheet in Google Docs. And in that, I've planned our next trip, which, as you can see, starts here in Brisbane and goes via Fiji for a couple of days. We then um, up uh, in Dolphins Cove in Anaheim in California for about four or five days. Our, our daughter and son-in-law are going to join us there. Uh, we then drive around, and I'll show you a map of that in a moment, uh, until we end up in Portland, Oregon, uh, before we fly back to LA and then via Fiji for a couple of days on the way home. Now, why is it so useful to use a Google Doc like this to plan our trip? Well, let me tell you, this document, oh, I'm sorry, I've just mentioned the word Google and my phone has decided it's going to set itself up to try and find a Google Doc. Let's ignore that. This document can be shared with for example, my daughter and son-in-law in, in, Anaha, in uh, North America. And I've also shared this with my son here in Australia and with my sister who lives here in Australia, of course, with my wife. The beauty of it is that wherever we are, they can see. And in this, I've created, as I say, a spreadsheet which shows where we are actually staying and what we are actually doing on any given day. And more importantly, and this is very important, where we are due to be each night because there is nothing worse than turning up at the wrong place at the wrong time. And I'll talk to you about that in a moment as well. Google Docs is a really great way of setting up a plan like this. But Google Docs is not the only tool that we use. This is, in fact, the North American component of the trip which Shirley and I are undertaking in February. You can see the map here of uh, uh, North America. We start out in Dolphins Cove, which is a, a, a timeshare resort that we have in Anaheim. Uh, we're then going across to Indio. We're taking a, a side trip down to take a look at the Organ Pipe National Monument, uh, then to Rancho Vistoso, which is actually in Tucson, Arizona, driving up through Nevada, we're staying at uh, Los Angeles and again in uh, at, uh, Las Vegas, sorry, and again in Reno. Uh, then we're going to Oregon and then staying in Portland, which, as I say, is where my daughter and her husband live. So that's a map. Now, these maps, who here has created a map in Google Maps of this sort, which shows you where you are going and what you are doing and how you get there? I don't see a lot of hands. It is really very easy to do. If you go into Google Maps and use the, let's create a new map, and I'll show you one here. Uh, if you want to use the map, you use adding a destination, and you can add a destination to where you wish to go and where you wish to stay. The beauty of that is it provides you all of the details, like, for example, which roads to take, how long it will take you to drive from point to point, the sort of things that you can see. Now, you can, as it says here, send this to your phone so that it's on your mobile phone and you can use that to track your journey. I actually don't suggest doing that because while I have set this map up to show us where we are going, we almost certainly won't travel exactly on the roads that it indicates. Why? Because I hate travelling on interstates. Interstates are boring. They're like being in an armchair surrounded by trucks at 150 miles an hour, or at least it feels that way to me. So we often take smaller highways, and these will only show you travelling on the interstates, unless you say don't use highways, in which case it takes you only on back roads, and that's even more confusing. I should tell you also, by the way, don't rely on maps alone, or at least don't rely alone on online maps. Anybody ever had the situation where you lose connection to your mobile data? A couple of years ago, well, a few years ago now, my daughter and her husband, who I have mentioned already, got married. They got married in San Francisco, and then they ended up having their reception a little further north, and eventually they had their honeymoon somewhere up here near Occidental. Now, I say it's somewhere up here because I can never quite find where it was that we were, but you can see the chances of there being much cell coverage in this area are fairly slim. The only 
GPS or the only map that I had was on my phone. And when we lost connection with data, we lost connection to those maps. So one suggestion I would make if you're going to be using online maps is download the map to your device so that it's not a problem. There are, of course, other maps than just Google Maps. There's here.com uh, or wego.here.com. Uh, this is uh, a map which shows you one of the places that we're going to. As I mentioned, we're heading to the Organ Pipe Cactus uh, National Monument because, well, we want to. Uh, and so I've downloaded the here map and I've downloaded that to my device so that it will always be available. Those are just a couple of the things that you can use to create your trip. One that I do love, and I'll mention this one just in passing because I love it because it creates really cool looking maps for you, is travelerspoint.com. If you're doing a world trip like the one that we did in 2006, I think it was, I can't remember, use travelerspoint.com. Please note, by the way, it has two L's in travelers. So for those of you who are in North America uh, and get confused, two L's, you'll find it. Those are just some of the trips some of the hints and tips that you can use online to plan your travel. Madam Toastmaster. Wow, I have learned quite a bit, not only about you personally, but about traveling. Thank you. Our second speaker, Nick Lacani. We're looking forward to seeing if Nick's voice holds out throughout this whole thing. He's already given us a little bit of warning. He is using Motivational Strategies Pathways Level 5, demonstrating his expertise in team building. The title of this speech is Delivering Club Officer Training, and Nick is taking all of his expertise that he has obtained over the last 40 years as a Toastmaster and infusing this into his speech. Please welcome Toastmaster Nick. Thank you. Madam Toastmaster, delivering club officer training. This is actually a second part of the project, which is team building. And it's part of my motivational strategies level five. In this part, I'm gonna talk about the planning that I've already done, and then how we developed the club officer training, how we came together and delivered it, and what the results were. In effect, the three elements I'm going to talk about are the plan, team bonding, and then the last element, which is the most important, delegate, communicate, trust. Let me explain. We planned it. Well, actually, I'm area director of my area. My friend, Julian, is area director of another area. And here's Julian, and here's me. Now, Julian is a very, very knowledgeable guy. You can see he's the font of all knowledge you can see with the water coming out of the top of his head over there. I'm more practical. I get things done. So when actually we got together and we talked about a plan, he had ideas. I helped to put them down on paper. In effect, we actually came up with the working plan. However, for three weeks before the COT, he was away visiting his family in Spain. Not the best plan, Julian. However, we had deputies to help us. So what I did while he was away, I worked with those deputies on my side and his side to make sure that things were working well. So therefore, not only did we plan, I started to actually bond with the team and on his side, his job was to do the logistics. So I spoke to his deputy, Shaimenda, and Shaimenda made sure the room was booked. We had organization for water, food, and all of those kind of practical things, that there's no uh, fire drills at the same time, that we have free parking at the university where we were meeting, all of those little things. I had my assistant, who Paul, who was actually helping me make sure that we had timing and so on. So we had, we had our actual plan right there. A few days before the COT, Julian came back. He said, right, let's get started. And I said, okay, don't worry. We've got a few things done. And we did a little bit of team bonding over a couple of conference calls. So two of us turned into four of us, just like the four musketeers over here. The really important thing was we had a laugh, 
we created a little WhatsApp group. We had a conference call as well on the two days preceding the COT. And we kicked around some ideas and put to, you know, actually answered our own questions to help each other. Well, that's the point, isn't it? That when we actually got to the work, we didn't just delegate and say, off you go and then we'll see you on the day. We communicated and we trusted each other to get the bits done that were necessary. However, because we were communicating, we were able to help each other along to deliver the very best that we could on the day. What happened? Did it fall apart? Did Julian's lack of timing actually cost us anything? No. I've actually done this kind of thing before. But what I learned was that I had to delegate, communicate, and trust. I couldn't take control of the whole thing. That's why we bonded with the team. What Julian learned was that, yes, it's good to have a plan, but you've got to have a list of actions as well and then start doing them as early as possible. We both learned from this. In effect, the results were that the teamwork worked. It started and finished on time. Now, you may say, well, yeah, that's fine. It's really important. We, in our meeting, in our clubs, appreciate people's time, don't we? We started at 10, finished at 2, and people were looking around saying, wow, really? We're done? Excellent. The audience was fed and watered. They knew where to come to. We'd actually sent out maps and directions and even an emergency telephone number should they get stuck in the lift. We had energy with smooth transition throughout with the different speakers that we had. In, in fact, my job was to actually coordinate the talent. And what I did was I actually had seven speakers speaking for five to seven minutes. Also, we had our role play with, the, with, the, with our different roles, with our seven committee roles, and we had feedback from them. So I had seven other people feeding back for two to three minutes. And with that and with a few other people, out of 40 people attending, at least 20 of them stood in front of the whole group and spoke for some time. As well as the beginning. Well, what I did was I kicked off the beginning, the start of the day, and I started the tempo, pushed it up, and really got people involved from minute one so they knew that that was what was expected. Join in, make a noise, ask questions. And they loved it. The feedback was amazing. They were fed, watered, but more than, more than that, they talked to other people that they had not met before in not only their area, but other areas. By two o'clock in the afternoon, they'd already created a WhatsApp group for themselves so that they could talk to each other. And that was the point. If you fish for them, yeah, then they'll expect you to fish for them every day. We taught them how to fish, and then they started fishing for themselves. And they are now working together, helping each other in, with their specific roles and moving on with their work. And what I'm going to do, we, uh, myself and Julian had a plan, a meeting for the next area, COT. Again, we're going to do it jointly. And I suggested we swap roles so that we do exactly the opposite that we did before. So that he gets very good insight into what I did. I'm not going to help him unless he asks. I may just ask a few questions along the way because we are going to delegate, communicate, and trust. Back to you. Thank you, Nick. Our third speaker is Antoinette Trim. Antoinette is speaking out of the Motivational Strategies Level 4, Building Skills, Building a Social Medium Presence. The title of her speech is Building WhatsApp Presence Among My Church Members. Antoinette is very proud of herself when she is given or even taking the opportunity to speak in public. 
Toastmasters has afforded her the opportunities to do such, and with each speech, she has noticed great improvement. Her goal now is to complete all the paths, and not so much to obtain the Distinguished Toastmasters title, but rather to become a Distinguished Toastmaster in her own right. Please help me welcome Toastmaster Antoinette. Thank you, Toastmaster Lois. Building an online presence among church members who don't really wish to be comes techno savvy can be very challenging at times. The archaic form of giving announcements during service over time proved to be not too welcoming in the sense that after the service, the chairperson will give countless announcements. We also have another form of doing announcements. For example, we project the announcements on the wall using a projector during the service. And in some cases, some members would leave during the service for one reason or the other, and of, and of course, did not get to see the announcements. Then I got this fantastic idea of forming a WhatsApp group. So I went around to each church member requesting their cell numbers. Some of the responses were, I am not on WhatsApp. I left my number at home. I don't want to be on WhatsApp. I don't have internet. Maybe forming a WhatsApp group is a good idea. That way we can get that way we can get events to a larger number of people, especially for those who haven't been to church service for a few months well for one reason or the other, but still want to be in contact with, with others or still want to know what is going on. And as I said before, it's a faster way to promote events. Eventually the WhatsApp group was formed. But you know what? Just after the WhatsApp group was formed, we were under storm watch. And I, being the secretary, had to put in the WhatsApp group that no church that particular day. Some people responded, some didn't. Those who responded said, thanks, and we just continued like that. In, a, in other cases, the WhatsApp group were, was used as, a, ad, a, as an advertisement board in the sense that people will put endless or senseless things in WhatsApp group like selling things and so on. And of course, some of the members were not pleased with that as it was really to highlight events of the church. And so at times, being the administrator, I had to intervene and quell some of the arguments. To date, Many people have seen the benefits of using a WhatsApp group. In having a WhatsApp group, we can have, we can say highlight a, a particular church member privately and maybe send a, a particular a message to them. Even it's even proved advantageous to me as well because I am not aware of all the advertisements. So some people, in some of my church members would even put events in the WhatsApp group, so making it known to everybody. So all in all, the archaic form, though archaic, <laughs> helped some members of the church in terms of giving, when the chairperson gives the announcement at the end of the service. The other method of putting the announcement on the projector and highlighting it, that's another method that we introduce or that, or that we have, as well as the WhatsApp group. 
So all in all, the entire membership will know about the events happening in the church. But besides the negatives, I believe there are more positives. And so I'm happy that we formed a WhatsApp group to promote the church events time and time again. Back to you, Lois. Thank you, Antoinette. I myself absolutely love WhatsApp and GroupMe and all those different applications. Sometimes though, I get lost with all the dings and the dongs and the dee -dee. Thank you for sharing your story with us and congratulations on your success with that. Madam Timer, can you please tell us how our speakers did? Absolutely, Madam Toastmaster. This evening, with our exciting speeches, we do have only one person that has qualified. Graham came in at 7 minutes and 39 seconds. Antoinette came in at 4 minutes and 58 seconds. Just a tiny bit shy of 5 minutes. However, Nick came in at seven minutes and 20 seconds, so therefore Nick qualifies. There you go. Congratulations, Nick. All righty, our second part of the, yeah, Roger. A point of order is uh, internet says speech five to seven minutes. If it yeah. is, then yeah. four and a half would qualify. That is correct. So we would be voting between Antoinette and Nick. Please send your votes to Joy. You are right, thank you, Roger. We are now at our second part of the meeting. This is always a fun time when you can think fast on your feet. And we are very thankful for Toastmaster Willie for stepping in on this role because many of you, if you haven't seen it already, you'll see it in your emails that Monica, our table topic master, had to go down to the basement due to tornado warnings. So we are thankful that Willie's here and please welcome our Toastmaster, our Table Topic Master, Willie. We can't hear you, Willie. Willie. Willie, you have to unmute yourself. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. And I share my desktop and you will see a list of questions. The time for the timer, this is the timing. One minute for green light, green, 1.5, one minute and 30 seconds for yellow, two minutes red and 30 seconds, that will be a pass. And you will be disqualified. Okay. Okay. Let me choose someone. Six, since you guys are a uh, advanced Toastmaster Club, I will choose those who are not speaking today. Okay, can I have Rob, uh, Eli to choose a topic? I will choose topic number 10. Okay, here you go. As communicator, however, we have to be, become aware of fears that may pre present us for even trying to connect with others is speech or writing. So I will pause my share for now so that the, the speaker can speak. The question by Willie points to, as speakers, as communicators, sometimes we got fears, we got things that Hold us on back. It's a good thing to do some self-reflection to notice as an individual member of Toastmasters or any type of public speaking, hmm, what holds me back? Is it planning my speech and writing my speech? Is it actually delivering the speech? especially in a Toastmasters type of event where it has to meet a time requirement? Hmm. Am I f afraid of whether I'll deliver things right and actually get a response from my audience? 
Will I be clear? Those are some of the things we wonder about. So careful self-reflection and planning and practice can make all the difference in banishing those fears and have a good, enjoyable time being a real, true, and even fun, engaging presence. That's some of the things to think about in addressing fears in public speaking. Back to you. Willie, our table topics master of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Okay, let me share my, okay, let us, okay, can I have the next? Okay, who do not have a role? Okay, can I have Joe to choose the topic? Okay, let me see. I share my screen again. Sorry, I just closed. Okay, can I have Joe, Joe Career Heart to choose the topic? I will take topic number one. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay. Have no fear of moving into the unknown. Simply, simply step up fearfully, fearlessly knowing that I am with you. Therefore, no harm can be before you. All is very, very well. Do it in complete faith and confidence. And it's by Hope John Paul too. Okay, over back to. You ready? Okay. I'm not convinced the, the Pope was talking about something very abstract here. I think the Pope was a little bit more literal about moving into fear. And that reminds me a tremendous amount about an event that happened many decades ago when I was on a camping trip. And we were on this camping trip and I was in a tent with my wife. There was no one else within probably 100, maybe 200 miles from us. We were way out in the wilderness. And she woke me up late at night with an alarm of how there was a tremendous amount of noise and rustling outside of the tent and how she was really getting terrified about what was going on out there. That there was this tremendous fear in her of what was going on outside. And eventually I got her to describe what is it, what is it, what is it? And it turns out that she was hearing rain and she thought there was a storm going on. Well, she had forgotten that we had actually pinched our tent at the side of a creek. And overnight, the creek had filled up with rain and it was just pouring rain down this creek. And it sounded like there was some tremendous storm and she was afraid of what was outside. And I think that the Pope would be a little more open to stepping out into that fear and realizing there's nothing out here but a bunch of water that you don't need to be afraid of. Mr. Table Topics Master. Okay, thank you, uh, John. For the, okay, let us choose an table topic, okay. Okay, can I have CD? Can I have Musa Kara to choose a topic? Well, um... <laughs> Can you see my screen? Can you choose yeah. a topic? Yeah, um... I'll try. <laughs> Go ahead, um... I'll choose topic number four. Okay, just... The eagle has no fear of adversity. We need to be like the eagle and have a fearless spirit of a conqueror. It's by Joyce Meyer. So, uh, 
That reminds me of the early adventurers of the world. Um, we talk about Christopher Columbus or the adventures like Vasco da Gama that explored the world. They had to have no fear of adversity and they had to go on in the unknown, to the unknown, not knowing what would happen to them, not knowing if they'll live or die. They endured hardships and eventually when they succeeded, the feeling of victory was, I'd say, in my imagination, they kind of sort like an ego. Thank you. Really? Did we lose you? Okay, there okay, we go. thank you. Okay. Can I have the next? Sorry, because there's some noise over on my side. Okay, can I have the next speaker, table topic speaker? Kishaw. Kishaw has volunteered himself. Okay, give me my name is Shem. I yeah. have some Okay, okay. Let me, okay. You, here you go. Can you see the screen? Sure. Okay, I which would, topic do you want to choose, Kishore? I would like to go for topic number seven. Okay. The whole secret of existence is to have no fear. Never fear what will become of you. Depend on no one. Only the moment you reject all help are you, I are you free? Over back to you, teacher. teacher. Table topics master, fellow Toastmasters of online presenters, and dear guests, have no fear. A man becomes high or low according to his deeds. This was told by Swami Vivekananda in 1893 at the World Convention of Religions in Chicago. After 126 years of that amazing speech, this script, this line still has a significance in the present day world. What do we all fear about? Do we fear about others judging us? Well, I dressed perfectly for the icebreaker speech and look at me today wearing the hat of the animal whose DNA we are all having. I had a tie the previous meet for my icebreaker, but look at me now having a dhoti as my shawl. I had normal ear glasses last time. Now look at me having Irene cool. Do I look cool with Irene cool? Have no fear of people judging you. <laughs> Have no fear of expectations from others. Life becomes a life becomes a spice. Life becomes a heart only if you only if we have expectations from others. Have no expectations from others. And the last point that Swami Vivekananda said is have no expectations of yourself. Just rise about all fears. Just live life like a free bird, not like an albatross, like live life, life an e like an eagle. Just rise about the level playing field. Just look at everything. Everything is easy. It's all easy peasy. Just don't have any tension. Just free yourself up. Just dress up like how you want to. Don't, uh, uh, don't, don't think the, uh, uh, the Toastmasters of online presenters would judge you. Don't think that girl would judge you by, by your appearance. It's what you are inside that matters. 
And if you know who you are inside, you are free from outside. You are free from all of the things that's happening around the world. I know I sound like a spiritual guru because this, because not because of my attire, because this quote was said by the most amazing spiritual guru that India has ever produced, Swami Vivekananda. I think if we, if we, if we take out the expectations of others and the expectations of ourselves, we'll be free of all our fears and we can wear whatever attires inside and outside. That's the spiritual advice for today. Spiritual Guru Psyche Show signing off. Over to the table, Topics Master. <laughs> okay, can I have the last speaker, Chidi, to do the table topic? Okay, let me, let me share my table topic. I, I, and I, you know, I think I've done one already. You got one already? Yeah. Okay, then in that case, I pass the control back to the Toastmaster of the day, Boris. All right, thank you, Willie. How incredibly creative. I have not seen this before. I enjoyed it immensely. Thank you. We appreciate you putting that together. I think some of us will be asking about that. And look at Jacinta. She has already posted the time in the chat box. It looks like everybody qualified. Yes, she's even telling me that. Please vote for Elaine, John, Chidi, or Sakashore and send your votes to Joy. Well, after all that spiritual learning and coming up with all those fabulous quotes, it is time for our general evaluator, Mr. Az, I mean, Jim Barber, to work <laughs> with us as the general evaluator. And he can tell you all about that particular quote. Please welcome our general evaluator, Toastmaster Jim. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, and welcome to the evaluation portion of our meeting this evening. This is the opportunity for our speakers to get unbiased and yet supportive feedback on their presentations that they gave this evening. And fortunately, we have an array of outstanding evaluators with us this evening. Our first speaker was Graham Carnes, and we are delighted to have as his evaluator, the inimitable Elaine Nieberding. I will remind all our evaluators before we begin, you have two to three minutes in case you've forgotten. Take it away, Elaine. General Evaluator Jim, honored guests, fellow Toastmasters, I'm most happy to have been able to evaluate Graham this evening. Our veteran radio broadcaster with the musical voice was entertaining and informative for us tonight. And his job was to present the use of visual tools to help make his point. He did make his points well. He showed us some new tools. Now, he titled his, his speech about tools for planning, but I actually found that his title could have been tweaked a little because he actually helped us with tools that help us visualize and track the route and an itinerary. And there are lots and lots of reasons of why we might not even think about doing that as a part of planning, it for me is kind of what you do after you've already kind of made the plans. So there was a part of me which was hopeful. I was going to see something like a commentary about TripAdvisor. Happily, Graham included for us all of the resources that he did share with us. He, sh he started out showing us Google Docs to create the itinerary. That was great. Google Docs is pretty easy to use. And then he shared with us four different mapping varieties. And it was especially helpful that he asked the audience, have you used something like Google Maps before? He found out that many of us haven't. And so he aptly gave us a demonstration that showed, hmm, it could actually be approachable. So I really appreciate his sensitivity and being responsive. 
So we got a feel for especially the mapping and rooting tools, but I really, really loved that what he was addressing was these elements of wanting safety and backup in our planning and especially being able to share information with family. So that was good. So I would like to challenge uh, Graham in the future. If he does a presentation like this, it would have been visually a little bit more interesting if some of the different tools had a little bit more color. Most of these map tools were kind of black and white and gray. So a little pops of color would have been good. He did do great transitions, which was wonderful. And he did make available for us all the resources in the chat. To be more effective next time, I would say tweak your title so that it really helps us know the point, which is about visualizing your trip and letting people know where you're going. Back to you, General, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Elaine. Our second speaker this evening was Nick Lacani, and evaluating Nick's presentation, we are privileged to have the one of a kind, two of him would be too many, the one, the only, Roger Fung. Take it away, Roger. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. What is the one secret to captivate the attention of the audience? Well, I'm going to hold back and tell you that a little bit later because I want to look at Nick's speech and tell you that the biggest thing, the biggest benefit and the one skill that Nick have demonstrated in his speech was that he was clear and full of energy without being overwhelming, without becoming the next Anthony Robbins. With that, he was able to communicate very clearly what he wanted to tell us. I have one option that he wants to ponder. And this is an option because it depends on what he's trying to do. And that is the size of his text. He had a number of texts next to him. If you have it in the speaker view, it was clear. If you're on the gallery view, you couldn't see it. One option is to break that up into multiple images one point at a time. Now that depends on what you're trying to accomplish with your speech. Therefore, it is not a specific suggestion per se, but an option. But the one thing that I would suggest to you, and that is the secret I wanted to share, is make your speech about us, the audience. You came in, you debriefed us. It was very appropriate to debrief a group, maybe a corporate setting, to debrief a group in terms of what had happened in your training. And you have your title, just like what Elaine mentioned about the last speaker. One possible title to your speech is three secrets that you can make sure that you start on time and end your time and have the participant dying for more in your next training. Yes, it's a very long, long title, but the point is to catch the audience's attention. Do something in that and also summarize at the end so that it makes it matter to me with them, right? What's in it for me? Now, you are very clear to demonstrate what you have learned throughout it. I would say push one step further. This is what you have learned. What can we glean out of it? What, how can we benefit as the audience? So that's why one big suggestion. With that, you are already an advanced speaker. You are clear. Your eye contact was great. You have hand gestures that we can see. Your text was appropriate. It was okay based on what you wanted to do. But if you want to do something else, you want to think about different style, but with that, in summary, make your speech more about what the audience can get out of it, just like what you did for your training, so that they couldn't help but to start a WhatsApp group or a page on Facebook to brag about what had happened. Think about that in terms of giving that speech to each and every one of us. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Roger. Our third presenter this evening was Antoinette Trim, and we are delighted to have evaluating Antoinette's presentation, the always stylish but never kitschy, see, I got the word in, always kit, never kitschy, excuse me, Tiger McCandy. Tiger, take it away. 
Thank you, Jim, for that wonderful introduction. Toastmasters and guests, it is my honor to evaluate Antoinette tonight. First of all, she did a really good job of tying together her introduction and her conclusion. She started out explaining this was a challenge. She specifically talked about the WhatsApp, trying to get the WhatsApp group. This was a challenge. And then at the end, she talked about, yes, it was a challenge, but we did accomplish that. And I see that often that people don't tie together their beginning and end. That was well done. Facial expressions. I liked her little, she has very subtle little facial expressions, but you could tell, you know, like when she was kind of irritated or, or a little bit surprised by something. I thought that was very well done. She articulates very well. I don't hear well, and especially with accents. Antoinette articulates every single word. I did not miss a single word. She has timely pauses. She says something that's significant. She, she gives a little bit of a pause for you to sink in and then she moves on. She just has a very casual kind of pleasant way of speaking. It's almost kind of mesmerizing in some way. And I, I, will, I will address that. She said some things that were very simple that got my attention. She said, fantastic idea. And she said it with, with some umpa, which I really like. All in all, I like that. That's a great transition. All in all, this happened. Quell arguments. Now, that's not something I've heard um, often, but it certainly tells a story. It certainly lets you know exactly what she was up to. I do have some suggestions. Her beginning was very clear about what she was talking about, but I would have liked something just a little bit more catchy, something a little bit more dynamic. Her eye contact, I'm not sure why it is, but Antoinette, you, you appear to be looking down. And I don't, I thought maybe you're looking at notes, but I don't think that's it. I don't know if it's the, the way you have your camera set up, but you're, you need to, yeah, I think it would be very advantageous if you looked at the camera to engage your audience. Your timing is already pointed out. You, you were at five minutes, so you had a good two minutes more to address your speech. And the last thing, and, and this is kind of my personal thing, I think you could have added some humor. You had several good opportunities, I think, where you could have told a, a little quirky story about one of the people you were dealing with. Again, you had two extra minutes, and I think you could have added in some humor. Other than that, it was a very engaging speak, very well organized. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tiger. Jacinta is our timer this evening. Can you verify if our evaluators all qualified? Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Yes, all of our evaluators this evening qualified to be voted on. Thank you very much. If you could, thank you. Thank you very much. And would you now, all of our members, please pass your votes for the best evaluator, in your opinion, to our vote counter this evening, Joy. And while you are doing that, I will now call on the various specialty roles that we have for the, our meeting, starting with our greatest volunteer, Lou Brown, as the grammarian. Lou, how did we do grammar-wise this evening? Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters and guests. We did a great job today. Definitely, grammar is not my strength, I will say. I am a math major, so it's actually a little challenging for me to listen very attentively to great word usage. Here's some examples that I got from the speeches and all of our speakers. Graham said, turning up at the wrong place at the wrong time, an armchair surrounded by trucks, very visual there. Nick had the teamwork worked, very nice. Also, we taught them how to fish and how and why, and they are now fishing for themselves, very good. We had Chidi, did I, if I mispronounce your name, I apologize, mentioned Vasco da Gama. We usually don't hear a name like that often. Also, soar like an eagle. Saikashori, I got to say, you had so many great lines. I just couldn't keep up. 
Life becomes a spice. Live life like a free bird, not like an albatross. What's inside that matters. And again, so many great phrases there. I thank you for them, sir. And just too many to list. Okay, a couple of great word choices on the part of many of our speakers. We had Elaine say self-reflection, banish and approachable. Antoinette, archaic and quill. John used the word abstract. Roger said ponder and tiger, articulate, mesmerizing. You said umpa. I think you may have said meant oomph, although I'm not sure either of those are words anyway. Nick, you said the audience was fed and watered. Watered kind of sound like maybe a plant to me, so I think there could have been a different way to phrase that. You also said from minute one, maybe something like from the beginning or from the start would have been a little bit easier to catch. Elaine, you said hold us on back. I think you could have just said hold us back. And that concludes my report, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you. Oh, by the way, word usage, kitsch. I heard Lois, Psyche Shore, and Jim Barber. If I missed anybody, I apologize. Feel free to raise your hand. Mr. Thank you very much, Lou. We appreciate your volunteering to be the grammarian this evening. Nice, nice report. I will remind our specialty reporters, please, if you could keep it to about a minute. Lou did great. Just want to remind everybody else to keep it to about a minute in your report. Deborah Carr, you were our watcher this evening. What did you watch? I watched everyone. And what I saw was, for the most part, everybody you know, fills the screen up well. They have good contrast. And, and it was kind of hard, you know, even though I was watching everybody, my eye kept going back to those abs right behind your shoulder, Jim. I, you know, thing is, I'm a woman. But what I did find was, is it Shady or she, Sheedy? And Willie um, are both lower in the screen where you need to bring up closer and fill your screen a little bit better so we can see you. There you go. And, um, uh, because early Willie had his uh, mid nose was in the middle of his name and we almost lost him for a bit. So if you'll just do that, that'll be great. And Tiger, if you can just darken one way or a little bit more, um, you know, you're getting a little bit more contrast, you know, in a white light room and light skin, it's, it's a little bit harder, but if you can just bring some type of a little bit more contrast, that would be great. What I really loved about Joy is that she went from the morgue to the moon, and that brightened up things for us. So that's my, that's my report, and, you know, I'm still just going to keep looking at those abs. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Deb, for your report and your comment on other things. John Callahan, you're the Wizard of Oz this evening. How did we do? No, I'm not. Somebody you know, else was. Who was the ah counter? Sorry. Christian, I beg your pardon. Christian, That's how me. did we do? We did uh, pretty well, uh, Mr. General Evaluator. So uh, the most used word of the day or filler word is uh. So I heard it 12 times, followed by so six times. And I use it just uh, before now. So it comes to seven, followed by N used four times. In terms of people and their speaking trends, our first speaker hit the motherload. Graham, you had nine occurrences where you had filler words. For example, as you can see, actually, those were expressions that could have been uh, omitted in your delivery. Nick is quite a cheeky speaker. He tends to use filler words when doing transitions. So be aware that and and however are your go-to transition words. Uh, be also aware that you have this uh, tendency to <sighs> breathe as you're speaking. So maybe you want to push it away or use a pop-up filter. Our third speaker had two occurrences of uh, filler words. And in terms of table topics, uh, speak, speakers, Psyche Show, you had well and uh happening a couple of times. Chidi, you had one so, one her, and one um. Having said that, we had Elaine, unfortunately, at one her in her table topic, in her evaluation segment. And Tiger, you also tend to have 
five occurrences. I think I think I said that earlier. Congratulations to Louise, Elaine in the table topic segment, John Callahan in the table topic segment, Roger Fung, and general evaluator Jim for using no filler words, no crutch sounds. That brings me to the end of my report. Over to you, Mr. G. Thank you very much, Christian. And finally, Sakashore, you were our chat monitor this evening. How, what did you monitor? Thank you, General Evaluator. Members of online presenters, if you have not saved the chat for today, please do go to the chat box and save it because today's chat had all the three major things that every chat uh, in a meeting should have. Number one, today's chat box was intellectual by the intellectual information shared by Toastmaster Roger, Roger Toastmaster uh, Graham, and Toastmaster Bushin regarding online resources that we could use. Number two, this chat box today was being used by the role players properly. The table topics master posted his table topics and the timer posted the times right after the session was over. I was impressed by that. Number three, the third most important part we all had the fun and frolic going on in our chat box regarding six pack abs, regarding, uh, 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 regarding being kitschy and uh, whatnot. So we had all the three aspects. It, it was a great chat today. It was a great show today. Over to the G. Thank you very much, Sakishore. And it's time for my evaluation. I'm going to make this very short. Uh, our three evaluators did as I expected this evening. They were great. They addressed the normal things that you would expect, eye contact, gestures, things like that. But what I really liked is that they went outside the box, so to speak, and addressed things that you wouldn't normally think of, you don't normally see in an evaluation. Elaine recommended that we needed to use more color in our visual presentations. I like that. Roger commented that we need to make the speech about us. And that's a reminder I think everybody needs to do. Tiger came up with a long list of, of suggestions of things he could do while remaining supportive. And that was great. But I really like that he suggested that we add humor to our presentations. Again, that's something that everybody can benefit from. I want to commend everybody on their timing of the meeting. Lou, I was not picking on you when I mentioned the one minute. You did fine. I was simply wanted to suggest that for everybody, and I forgot to mention it before you came on board. It was a great meeting, and it's because everybody here is our dedicated professionals, and what can I say? You did great. I now ask for our, according to the agenda, I will ask our vote counter, Joy, how did, the, how did we do this evening of vote-wise? The best speaker tonight was Nick. Congratulations. And the best table topic speaker tonight was Sai Kishore. And lastly, the best evaluator was Roger. Congratulations to everybody and back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Joy, and I now happily return control back to our Toastmaster de jour, Lois Margolin. Lois. Thank you, Jim. Well, I enjoyed myself immensely. Jim, Jim someone was like killing my dreams because they were saying that was Photoshop, but those weren't your abs. And I was like, say it isn't so. Don't, don't break my heart like that. You know, it just, whew. Anyway. It's a, it's a selfie. It's up there. I feel so much better. All righty. We have a whole bunch of stuff coming up here. 1228, we have a speech a thon. Roger, I'm actually transitioning my apologies into presidential mode. Roger, would you like to tell us about our speech a thon? Yes, the best way to burn off everything that you're about to consume next week is to show up at our speech a thon on Saturday. We are going to have three different speakers, three very different style. And one of them is actually a debate. No, nope, not a political debate, but a debate of different kind that would impact each and every one of you. And Joy is going to lead us in it to talk about what are some of the best ways to prepare for our retirements. So you want to come and show up and you can look at the calendar on our website to make sure that you know the timing and things. And if you want to be an evaluator or play one of the roles, please join us because I know you have nothing better to do after Christmas. 
Back to you, Madam Thank President. You, sir. I know on some of these speechathons, you need a specific number of people. Are do you need that for this particular speechathon, or you're good in the idea? Our speaking role and backup speaking role has been filled, and we do need a couple of evaluators and timers. So please go ahead and look at the, the agenda and pick the one that you like. Okay, I will make sure we put that out there. On December 23rd, just two days before the 25th, we have three speakers. We have Christian, Carol, and Christopher, but we do want a backup speaker in case there is a cancellation. We do need a Toastmaster of the Day. Who will be available on the 23rd to be our Toastmaster of the Day? Ooh, everybody's... Thank you, Elaine. We do need a couple of evaluators. Is there anybody that wants to raise their hand right now to be an evaluator on the 23rd? Lou and Jim, perfect, I needed two. All right, there are some ancillary roles like timers and things like that, and we'll move on from there. But let's ask our guests, what did we think about the meeting? I see Willie's already beating me to the punch, but Willie, we're gonna ask you to go ahead and unmute yourself and tell us what you thought. It was a well-organized meeting, okay? All right, what thank you, you. What it can be better is, Wherever the speaker have finished, they, they should pass the control to the Toastmaster of the day. This was neglected most of the time. So it was just, there's a, there's a few seconds of weightage time wasted. So like, for example, table topic master have finished, I pass the control to Toastmaster of the day. But most some of the speaker miss out this step. So we should, we should improve for that. Okay, well, we appreciate that. Thank you, sir. We'll pay more attention. TD, what did you think about the meeting? Interesting. Um, I, I am going to uh, come back and, uh, and, and just, you know, but I, I really loved, the, you know, everything today. It was very nice. Thank you. Well, we're glad you enjoyed. Yeah. We have two minutes to go. Are there any comments, questions? Is there anything I did not bring up? Graham. There's one thing that I meant to mention in my speech, but I ran out of time. I don't rely on technology. With all of these tips that I was giving you, don't rely on technology. Did I ever tell you about the time that we arrived at Heathrow 10 minutes after our flight to Los Angeles closed? 10 minutes. We missed it by. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a horrendously expensive mistake. They sent me an email. I'd actually seen the email, but somehow not transferred it into my calendar. And so I ended up trudging over to the uh, service desk. And uh, I have to give thanks to the people at Delta. Uh, they said, well, yeah, we sent you an email, but you might have missed it. I said, no, I don't think I did. You might have missed it. Oh, yeah, I might have missed it. Uh, and so they said, oh, we can put you on a flight to LA in another six hours. You know, we're not going to charge you for this. And I, well, that'll be great. My wife then turned to me and said, of course, that does mean that we're going to have to rebook our flight from LA to Portland. And she said, I can't see this on here. Um, yeah, they booked us on that flight instead, direct to, uh, to Portland instead. So we actually arrived in Portland three hours earlier than we would have otherwise. <laughs> Praise be to Delta, but I have to tell you, don't rely on technology. Always have a backup. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Deborah, I saw your hand up earlier. Did you want to say something? Well, I had a question about next week, but I, I that's that's already answered. So okay, we're good. Cool. Madam President, we forgot to do one very important vote. Who won the ugliest sweater of the evening? <gasps> oh my gosh! Well, I... <laughs> for those wearing sweaters. <laughs> All right. Well, let's send our vote really fast to Joy. Who's in the running here? I see Elaine proudly showing her sweater. Sackashore. Lou, Joy, anyone else showing their sweater? All right, let's vote real fast. And we'll let Joy figure this out. Oh, and Graham, he's kind of in it, even though it's not a sweater. It is an interesting outfit. As you're, pa as you're passing your vote to Joy, uh, piggyback on what Graham mentioned in my very, very early days on my marriage, uh, we went to Orlando and arrive in a rental car to our 
hotel at around midnight to realize that the hotel had been damaged by storm, completely shut down. There's no nothing within five miles. But of course, Rogers got his cell phone. So uh, that's exactly the only way that I could save myself is to call to bed. Oh, please, 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 please stop working. My wife is sitting over there. She's going to divorce me. Okay, they found something for me. So. Okay. Well, I don't rely on the GPS. I call my husband. I go, I'm lost. Just tell me how to go home. And then he goes, what direction are you in? I'm like, I don't know. I'm going straight. Why do you ask me these questions? It's definitely a challenge for him, I have to tell you. Joy, do you have our ugliest sweater winner? And yes. The Give winner us- of the ugliest sweater competition is Elaine. Congratulations. Yay! Take a bow, Mr. Penguin. Thank you. That adjourns this particular meeting. We are a minute over, but that's because we have that special vote to go. Thank you all. We will see you next week. All right. Bye, everyone. Stopping as we see. Bye, everyone.